In this module, we will be talking about a bunch of logic families called ratioed logic families. They all share some features together and they will help us understand what a logic family means. But before we do that, we have to talk about the PMOS. The PMOS is the complementary device of the NMOS. It is the other type of MOSFET. A PMOS is fabricated in an N substrate. So we have N type silicon in the substrate. It has P plus sources and drains, so P plus instead of N plus, and the channel will thus be P type. And therefore, in order to attract holes to form the channel, we need to apply a negative gate voltage, or at least a gate voltage that is negative relative to the source. So if we apply a gate voltage that is low, it will attract holes towards the oxide forming a conductive channel. Notice that there is a PN junction between the source and the body and the drain and the body. And for both PN junctions, the P type is the drain and the source and the N type is the substrate. To guarantee that these PN junctions are reverse biased, we connect the body of the PMOS to the highest voltage available, which is usually the supply voltage. This creates a depletion region around the drain and the source for the PMOS, guaranteeing that we do not have conduction from the source to the body or from the drain to the body. As with the NMOS, there is also a depletion region that forms below the channel, enveloping the entire transistor. Now, the PMOS is actually the, um, a very similar device to the NMOS, but they, all, they, also, um, they also kind of have differences that are important to point out. So, Let's compare the two together. We have here the NMOS and we have a PMOS. Now, for the PMOS to work, we have to apply a relatively negative gate voltage. So V gate that is less than V source will attract holes to form the channel. But V gate that is greater than V source, not only greater, but greater by more than V threshold, will form a channel in NMOS. In NMOS, when we apply a positive voltage, to one of the two terminals of the, of the transistor, that becomes the drain. So V drain is greater than V source. This causes the source to source electrons and the drain to drain electrons. So electron flow is from the source to the drain. In the PMOS, when we apply a positive voltage, this terminal becomes the source, while the lower terminal becomes the drain. And so the holes flow from the higher source to the lower drain. Now, Current in uh, uh, an NMOS flows against the direction of the uh, electron flow, and so current in an NMOS transistor is from drain to source, whereas current in a PMOS flows from the source to the drain, and so we have ISD in a PMOS. So everything is kind of uh, the opposite in a PMOS relative to an NMOS. So it's important to ask how do we determine if a PMOS is on and how do we determine if, uh, if it is saturated or if it is ohmic. So for a PMOS to be on, its VGS has to be less than V threshold P. So this causes the PMOS transistor to be on. Uh, similarly, if VGS for the PMOS transistor is greater than V threshold P, then it is off. So we notice that this is exactly the same inequality that we used for the NMOS transistor, except that the direction of the inequality is reversed. So the direction of the inequality, if it is greater than in the NMOS, it should be less than in the PMOS and vice versa. And this makes sense. We need the opposite kind of voltage to attract the opposite kind of, 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 of charge carrier. And so it makes sense that we need to uh, uh, apply a negative voltage instead of a positive voltage for the PMOS. Similarly, for the PMOS, uh, it is saturated when VDS is less than VGS minus v, v threshold P. And this is the opposite of the case for the NMOS, where it is saturated when VDS is greater than v, VGS minus V threshold N. So it makes sense then that the PMOS is ohmic when VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold P. So what about the current for PMOS? The current for PMOS is the same current expression for NMOS, whether we are talking about saturated current or, um, or uh, ohmic current, 
it is mu p c oxide w over l into let's talk about saturation current into vgsp minus v threshold p all square and if we do have channel length modulation channel length modulation would apply as one plus lambda p vds so it's exactly the same equation that we use for nmos and again for omic we would also use the same equation which is mu p c oxide w over l into vgs minus v threshold p into vds minus vds square over 2. but we have to be aware of something for the pmos the source is the higher potential and the drain is the lower potential so v source is greater than v drain by definition in uh, a pmos and also v source is greater than vg by definition in fact if we look at an nmos and a pmos if you look at the circuit symbols for both of them this is how we draw them in digital circuits we don't we do not actually draw the uh, body terminal because we know uh, by default it is connected either to supply in the case of nmos's or to uh, sorry uh, to ground in the case of nmos's or to supply in the case of pmos's we also do not distinguish the drains and the source because the drain and the source are symmetric there's nothing in the construction of either transistors that tells us which terminal is the source and which terminal is the drain we, we get to find out which is which when we look at circuit operation and we find out which terminal is connected to the higher potential in the in the nmos in general the drain is the low is the higher potential the source is the lowest potential and the gate lies somewhere in between if the nmos is to be on then the gate has to be higher than the source by at least v threshold n and if the, set, the transistor is to saturate, then VDS has to be higher than VGS by at least V threshold, uh, by, by at least an, uh, a voltage of V threshold. For the, for the PMOS, the source is the highest point, the drain is the lowest point, and the gate lies somewhere in between. And so VGS is a negative potential, and VDS is also a negative potential, and the current flows from the source to the drain. So we can use the same current equations for PMOS as we used for NMOS as long as we substitute everything with the proper sign. And here it is very important to notice that V threshold P, the PMOS threshold voltage, is a negative number. This is very important to notice. And when you substitute whether in the inequalities that determine the region of operation or in the current expressions, V threshold P has to be substituted as a negative number, not as a positive number. And so when we say that the, the, the PMOS transistor is on when VGS is less than V threshold P, this means that when VGS is a negative number that is more negative than V threshold P, this PMOS is going to be on. Also look at the expressions for current. VGS is going to be a negative number, minus V threshold fee is going, to, is going to be a positive number, and their square is going to be a positive number. In the ohmic current, VGS minus V threshold P is going to be a negative number, but VDS is also a negative number, giving us a positive value for current. It is also important to notice that lambda P, the channel length modulation uh, constant coefficient for PMOS, is also a negative number, just like the threshold voltage. Again, we have to substitute lambda p with the proper sign, and we have to use VDS with the proper sign. Both of them are going to cancel out their signs, and we'll end up with a positive expression for the effect of channel length modulation. So, in short, to determine the region of operation of a PMOS transistor, use the same inequalities as NMOS, except reversed. Make sure you substitute everything with the proper sign, including V threshold. And for current equations, use the same current equations as NMOS, just substitute everything with the proper sign.